Hello, my name is Kirsten Mulrennan. I'm an archivist and I work at the Special Collections and Archives Department at the Glucksman Library. This is just a short introduction to our department, the types of collections we hold, the work we do, and how we can help you with your research and coursework at UL. Our department is on the ground floor of the new library across from the Grand Reading Room and access is by appointment only. We're now offering increased on-demand digital access to our collections. If there is something you wish to view, you can email us and we will check if we can provide a digital copy for you to access at home. Otherwise, you can make an appointment to access the reading room, but please be aware that there are a number of restrictions in place under current COVID social distancing guidelines. We also offer research consultations on a one-to-one -one basis and we run a number of classes, workshops and Q&A sessions. The Glucksman Library's unique and distinctive collections are held apart from its main collections. These include archives, rare books and journals, and they cover a variety of research themes, from history and literature to architecture, science, religion and so on. All items are of local, national and international interest. These collections support teaching and learning at UL in a number of ways. Students come and access the material generally as part of their coursework, or they can undertake a more focused study for FYPs, MAs, PhDs and beyond. We also support external researchers and academics. Our material dates from around 200 AD to present, so that's almost 2,000 years of history that we hold. And just to put that into perspective, we have over 2,000 boxes of archival material and 40,000 printed works in our collections. These obviously hold endless opportunities for original resource, and it's always worth contacting us if there's something that you think we might be able to offer you for your research. Our collections include both primary and secondary sources. Primary sources are created in the moment as the result of an activity or by a witness to an event. These documents are at the stuff of history. They provide evidence of past people, events and institutions. They can include manuscripts, letters, maps, diaries, photographs, etc. In contrast then, secondary sources are created after the fact and they're based on the accounts held either in primary sources or in other secondary sources. This means that these sources represent an interpretation or an analysis of an original source, and examples of these would be printed books, textbooks, reference books, and bibliographies. Examples of secondary sources in our collections include rare, limited, or first editions of books, locally printed journals, and other rare printed materials. Some of our collections also feature a number of incunabla, which are books printed before 1501. Our rare book collections are usually thematic and reflect the research strengths of the university and the interests of individual faculties and academics. For example, the image used here is taken from a collection of Gothic literature that we acquired for faculty members in the English department who used the collection in a second year module. Some examples of our rare book collections include the Norton and Leonard collections. These contain thousands of volumes of local and national interest, as well as a number of associated archival material, including over 12,000 postcards from counties all over Ireland, manuscripts, prints, maps and other rare items. The McAnally Travel Literature Collection includes travel guides and accounts from all over Ireland and abroad in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The Gilson and Yeats collection contains a number of first and rare editions of the works of W.B. Yeats. One of them, the Tower, is pictured here on this slide, and work is currently underway to catalogue the Osuluan Irish language collection. The Bolton Library consists of over 12,000 early printed texts in Incunabla and covers a variety of topics from science and medicine to religion and languages. So far, about one third of this material has been catalogued and over 50 items have been discovered that are completely unique to the collection and do not survive anywhere else in the world. Archival collections then are made up of unpublished material that cannot be found anywhere else. As mentioned earlier, these are what's known as primary sources, original and unique source material that provides evidence of past events and the activities of past people and institutions. Archives can be textual, so they can be handwritten or typed, and they could be non-textual, and this includes everything from photographs, maps, audiovisual material, as well as objects. We actually hold a cannonball from the First World War from our Armstrong collection, and we make sure that we have a warning on the box to say how heavy this is. There are a number of different archive services, and this not only includes dedicated national, county and university archives, 
but usually businesses and religious institutions, as well as hospitals and military organisations, have their own archive. So if there's a topic you're interested in, it's always worth getting in touch with an organisation to see if they have an archive, or if their records have been donated to a dedicated archival institution elsewhere. We currently hold over 200 archival collections and the catalogues for over 30 of these are available online through the library website for you to search. These cover a broad variety of topics, including architecture and business, estate and family history, Irish military history and rebellion, as well as the personal papers of a number of literary figures, including Limerick author Kate O'Brien. We also hold the National Dance Archive of Ireland, and this consists of collections from over 70 dance companies in Ireland, covering Irish dance and ballet, contemporary dance, and even flamenco. Archives provide evidence of past ways of living, and this can give us new insight or a different perspective on our lives today. This material is important for more than just a study of history, as the collections are about people more generally, and it's important we have an awareness of our heritage, about the decisions behind the laws that are made, and how politics, religion and social structures affect people in their everyday lives. Moreover, in the era of fake news, archives teach us the importance of context, and the importance of critically analysing any material we're faced with to investigate who created the record and why, and what that means in the broader context, the broader web of information, history and storytelling that tells us who we are and where we've come from. Archives teach students to be curious and cautious about what they read, to follow lines of inquiry that may not be immediately obvious, to critically assess what each document means and what this tells us about a person, event or institution that maybe we didn't know before. The skills you use while you research, find, analyse and reflect on archival material are all highly transferable to other areas of your study, as well as your future career. So what do archivists do? At a basic level, archivists collect, manage and provide access to primary sources. Archivists must also encourage use of this material. They must facilitate and enable research and help their users build archival literacy, which means that they're building the skills that they'll need to be able to search, find, access and analyse archival material for themselves. This process is known as outreach. Archivists also appraise material for archival value. This means that when a collection comes to us, we will assess its enduring research value for the future. Typically, only about 5% of records that are created will end up being kept in an archive. Archivists also arrange and describe the material to create an archival catalogue for each collection. This can be a tricky process, as the archivist must put themselves in the shoes of the person who created the records and try to work out why they were created and what they mean in terms of the broader context on any given topic. Archivists are guided by legal, professional and ethical standards. This means that we cannot always provide access to material if it is closed under data protection legislation like GDPR or if there's any ethically sensitive material but archivists will always declare the reason for a records closure in the archival catalogue. Archival description attempts to document both the content and context of a record, while at the same time capturing hierarchical and other relationships among and across records. This is known as provenance, an archival term for re-establishing the original order of a collection. In order to do this, archivists must act almost as detectives, trying to re-establish as much as they can how the records were initially created, used, by whom and for what purpose. All these elements are vital for our contextual understanding as well as our intellectual control over a collection, because if we don't fully understand how and why a record was created, we can't fully understand what it means, and this might lead us to misinterpret the past. This is a tricky process, if you can imagine, several boxes or several hundred boxes of material being donated to an archive that's been rescued from an old building or office and it's all in no particular order. In contrast to the Dewey Decimal System used in general library collections, it's important to remember that archival collections are organic, not thematic. This means that archival collections are always associated with the creator of the record rather than the topic of the material. The archivist keeps all records created by one person or institution together instead of imposing a new order on the material. As an example, at UL, we create archival collections under the name of each dance company that created them. 
We don't keep all contemporary dance material in one box and all ballet in another box. We do this because it is the context of a record's creation that gives its meaning, not just its content. The importance of context in archival collections is reflected in the archival numbering system. Archives use alphanumerical codes to give each item a unique reference number. Collections are numbered hierarchically. A collection is given a code, for example here P6, and each item within that collection then is given another unique code separated by a dash. This means that the letter shown here, number 1248, is always associated with its parent collection P6, and it can never be mixed up with the records of another collection. These numbers are always written on the document in pencil, usually on the top right hand corner of the document. This numbering system is important for a number of reasons. So as mentioned earlier, it's important for intellectual control and context, as this item now can't be mistakenly identified with another archival collection. It's important for security, so we check each item issued to a researcher in the reading room and again when they return them to the issue desk. It's also important for referencing. When citing an archival document, it's vital to quote each item's unique reference number. Further guidance relating to referencing is available through the UL History Handbook, as well as the guidance provided by Irish Historical Studies. In addition to establishing intellectual control over collections, the archivist must also oversee the physical preservation of the material in their care. We do this in a number of ways. There are handling procedures when viewing original material in class or in the reading room. No liquids or pens are allowed near documents, only pencils, and you must be careful not to lean or press on the documents. All of this just helps us to preserve the document as it is without additional damage for future generations. Archival material, when it goes behind the scenes in the department, is kept in acid-free folders and boxes. And these in turn are what's known as archival strong rooms. These are light, temperature and humidity controlled environments. Again, our aim is to keep paper and photographs and other material within the optimum range for long-term preservation. Mobile shelving, pictured here from one of our strong rooms, allows us to get much more material into a room than on regular static shelves. These rooms are highly secure and our reading room is monitored by CCTV and we have a fire suppression system that extinguishes a fire using gas instead of water, again to protect the documents. As well as the ongoing long-term care of archival material, archives also undertake more concentrated active care of damaged or fragile material and this is what's known as conservation. This aims to prolong the life and accessibility of the collection. So if material comes to us and it's very badly damaged by water, fire, mould, insects or tearing, the conservator will intervene. Some of these interventions can be quite small, for instance repairing tears in the paper and flattening really tightly folded material, but they can be bigger, washing and rebinding material. This is obviously a delicate process and takes place in a dedicated conservation lab. In order to both increase access and aid preservation, Archivists digitise material. Digitisation is the transfer of analogue or physical material into a digital form. This includes scanning or photographing material to enable online sharing, publication or even a closer analysis of a document's handwriting. Digitisation, however, is not the same thing as digital preservation. Once you scan the original, you now have two items you have to preserve. The original, which is kept in the strong room as usual, but now also a digital copy, which can sometimes be more vulnerable than the original itself. For instance, a JPEG image will degrade over time the more you access, edit, copy and send it through email and so on. So digitisation is not the same thing as digital preservation. Digitisation necessitates digital preservation. This is one of the reasons why we can't digitise everything and why archives only usually digitise a small selection of material from a collection. Another important aspect of the archivist's role is outreach and engagement, and this comes in many forms. In a university setting, it is so important to raise awareness of our collections among students and staff. We do this in a number of ways. So we use the collections in teaching and learning, and we deliver sessions and workshops to students. We contribute to publications by staff who use the collections in their research. And we also create physical and online exhibitions. We have a blog and a website, specialcollections.ul.ie, 
which gives additional insight into our material, and we have an active presence on Twitter. We also launch an annual advent calendar, which highlights a different item from our collections for each day every December. The department also contributes to a number of different public projects, providing research advice and digital scans to publications, exhibitions and public history talks, as well as TV programmes like RTE's Who Do You Think You Are and Building Ireland. We support teaching and learning across a variety of programmes at UL. We work with the departments of Architecture, English, History, as well as the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance. We work with faculty to embed our collections onto the course curriculum, and we do this in a variety of ways. We use items from our collections as the basis for different workshops, for example, hands-on sessions on reading handwriting or how to do archival transcription. We also do show and tell sessions where we showcase some of our most well-known or important items, and we host Q&A sessions with department staff. This all enhances the students' experience at UL and it provides our students with an opportunity to engage with subject matter expertise and primary source material that's not held anywhere else. As mentioned earlier, we launched a new blog in 2020 called Unique and Distinctive, and this is an image taken from its homepage. We publish blog posts fortnightly, written by all members of staff in the department with lots of different interests and areas of expertise. We have a number of additional web pages on the blog, which provide research guidance, advice on how best to search and browse the collections and their various research themes. We also have links to our online exhibitions, currently one on the First World War called Long Way to Tipperary and one on Limerick and the 1916 Rising. We have a gallery of images from our collections and we're currently working on thematic research guides which will give more in-depth research advice on particular topics. If you're interested in undertaking research using our collections, it's important that you search your topic broadly to begin and familiarise yourself with our collections through the library website and our blog. Try to narrow down your research question and figure out what you're looking for or if there's anything in particular in our collections that you want to know more about. You can then drop us an email and we'll get back to you. We offer one-to-one -one research advice with different members of the team depending on the area and this is important as our team know the collections best. So if you're not sure where to start, we're here to help and advise you and to suggest additional sources that you may not have thought about, but which may be of interest to you. We can then provide a digital scan of an item to you to access remotely, or we can make an appointment for you to come and view the item in our reading room. It is important to remember there are a number of practicalities and time constraints when doing original source research. It can take time for you to identify an item, for our team to retrieve and scan it. And depending on the amount of material you're looking at, it can take time to work through a number of boxes of material and to familiarise yourself with the handwriting and so on. Some items cannot be photographed and this can take researchers additional time then for note taking. Our printed collections are available to search using the main library website. You can filter your search using the drop down menu Special Collections. If you wish to search the Bolton Library in particular, you should use the search term Cashel Diocesan Archive, and that will narrow your search to all items catalogued to date from that collection. More information about our collections is available on our pages on the main library website, on our LibGuide, and also on our blog. An archival catalogue is created for each archival collection we hold. These must be searched separately from the main library catalogue. As mentioned earlier, we have over 30 archival catalogues available online, as well as over 70 catalogues from the National Dance Archive of Ireland. All these individual PDFs are available through the library website under the Explore Collections tab. We are currently working on launching an archival database which will allow researchers to search across all our archival collections, to use keyword searches, to browse images and so on, so watch this space. And if you're not looking for anything in particular and you just want to browse all our collections, you can go to our blog at specialcollections.ul.ie and navigate to collections on the top menu. You can then browse the collections by type, so you can filter under archives, rare books or the dance archive. And you can also search by research theme A to Z, so you can filter collections relating to architecture, literature, military history and so on. As the volumes in the Bolton Library are so diverse, there are too many research themes to list in their entirety, but we have a sample of these on the blog for you to browse to get a sense of the types of topics they cover, 
And if you have any more questions about a particular theme, you can email us and our bulletin cataloger will get back to you with more specific research advice. As mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, we're now providing more and more digital access to our collection to enable remote access. Low resolution digital copies of items will be provided to students on request for private research and study and we just need a signature from you to declare that you won't publish or share the images without permission. We can also arrange high resolution scans of selected items if required for publication. Thank you for listening to this introduction to the Special Collections and Archives Department at the University of Limerick. I've left all our contact details here on the final slide and I've put some search hints and tips on our homepage on the Glucksman Library's Sullis site. If you have any questions, you can contact us at speccoll at ul.ie, so that's S-P-E-C-O-L-L -L at ul.ie, and you can find more about us on our blog at specialcollections.ul.ie.